I'm Laura McLemore. I'm archivist here at No Memorial Library, uh, and we're in the Archives and Special Collections at Noel in at LSU Shreveport. Um, we're specializing in the history of documenting the history of Northwest Louisiana and the Red River region. Uh, we have here today some of the um, things that we consider the stars in our collection. Uh, one that we're proudest of that kind of is the opening of what what one would consider modern uh, Northwest Louisiana, I think, is the clearing of the raft of the Red River in 1873. This volume is a collection of 107 photographic plates that were taken by um, R.B. Talfort to document the uh, progression of the clearing of the raft in the Red River in 1873 between <coughs> Natchitoches and uh, just above Shreveport. It was particularly important. It was the last and most successful clearing of the Red River raft, and it, it enabled Shreveport to become a really important trading port for, for the rest of the 19th century. Unfortunately for some of the crew, of the aid uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers, their visit to Shreveport coincided with the yellow fever epidemic of 1873, which just decimated the population. Uh, Lieutenant Eugene Woodruff, who was in charge of the uh, raft clearing um, project, came into town to reprovision his boats and was caught up in the epidemic and uh, decided to stay and assist. Uh, as a result, he contracted yellow fever himself and within two weeks died, and his brother George then took over the project and completed it. And we have the papers of Eugene and George Woodruff here. They go with the album. This is one from George to his mother in March of 1873. Um, he says, this week has not been very eventful. The raft of drift number seven at which we were working last week has been removed and after pulling some snags, we proceeded to number eight. This lies in a place where the river is narrowed and divided by towhead islands and is shallow, at least in that part chosen for the channel. This makes it slower and more difficult to remove the raft, which is much the longest we have had, though composed almost entirely of cut drift. These photographs have been used extensively for uh, books on the Red River region and uh, particularly for Louisiana history textbooks for um, eighth grade students. So we're, we're very, um, very pleased to have it. And the, there were two actually produced, one that uh, accompanied the Army Corps of Engineers report um, to Congress, which is uh, now in the Library of Congress, and this one, which appropriately, I think, resides here in the Northwest Louisiana region where the raft existed. Um, a couple of these other photographs, we have many, many photographs of graphs of steamboats since um, this was the outcome of the clearing of the raft meant commerce for Shreveport. And this, this particular photograph is of a steamboat, the Washita, which is pulled up to uh, Commerce Street, which is the street bordering the river in Shreveport. It looks quite a bit different than it does today. Another area of, of our history that, that people are quite familiar with, one way or other, is the oil business. And we've gotten a lot of attention recently because of the Haynesville Shale. But oil in uh, Louisiana is really the story of the 20th, 20th as well as the 21st century. 
The first well was drilled in 1901 in DeSoto Parish and in 1904 in Caddo Parish. Um, so we have a very large collection of um, photographs documenting the history of oil exploration and production in North Louisiana. Um, one of the uh, interesting historical facts about uh, drilling in this area is that the first oil wells were drilled over a body of water or through a body of water in uh, as early as 1908 in Caddo Lake here in um, in Caddo Parish and um, we have pictures documenting the very primitive now uh, steam engines that were used as pile drivers for these and uh, one of the interesting things that that we always note is that it's not just men at the um, at the oil wells oftentimes a photograph of the crew will include women and even children when the oil business began in North Louisiana. Uh, equipment was taken to the oil field with mule teams, and um, they were usually a large uh, contingent of mules pulling wagons through very uh, muddy streets. Often the wagon hubs were up, the wagon wheels were sunk in the mud up to their hubs, and the, the mules were sunk up to their knees was not uncommon. Our photographs also document the dangerous nature of uh, drilling for oil and wildcat wells back in the day when there was no regulation of any kind. Um, we have pictures as early as 1905 and 1907 of huge uh, oil well fires. These two uh, I think demonstrate just how regular an occurrence uh, catastrophic fires were. This photograph here is from 1911 and it says that it was the largest uh, oil well fire in the United States up until that time. I think uh, represented a loss of a million dollars which was a lot in 1911. But the very in, two years later, in 1913, we have another picture. Could almost be the same picture. Um, largest oil well fire in the United States as of that time. So it was a very regular occurrence, and so regular that uh, there's even a, a a man posing here in front of the um, in front of the fire uh, in a very casual stance with his arm propped against a fence post. Here in our archives, we've been here since 1974 and have done um, a great deal of work in documenting the history of our region. We're the only institution in this area that fulfills this mission.